It's good to be here this morning. Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, I'm State Senator Lou Gentile from Steubenville, and uh, I'm pleased to be part of the panel today. I want to highlight uh, that I am the only Democrat on this panel. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. a from you. But I'm pleased to, to have that opportunity. Uh, thank you all today uh, for being here, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Um, for many years now, uh, Southeast Ohio uh, has struggled economically, and um, we see uh, this opportunity uh, for us, particularly, as a chance uh, to revive our economy. Uh, all the while, I think it's critical um, that we do this properly, uh, that we protect our environment, uh, that we create local jobs uh, for our local communities, for our small businesses, and uh, spur our economy. And so, uh, I'm looking forward to, to working with many of the companies uh, that have demonstrated an interest in our region. Uh, we went literally from uh, some of the slowest years uh, in recent memory to a sudden surge uh, of economic activity. And uh, although it hasn't kicked in fully, um, we expect and anticipate uh, within the next five years substantial growth. And uh, we're trying to partner with some of our, our educational institutions make sure our workforce is trained and prepared to handle this. Uh, certainly infrastructure is a concern uh, with roads, uh, with water, with bridges. And uh, so I've tried to be uh, an advocate on behalf of local governments and communities and workers to make sure that um, we're able to do this, do it responsibly, and to have a positive economic benefit from it. So uh, I think a balanced approach uh, is the best approach. And it's one that, uh, that I've taken uh, very seriously and have tried to be uh, committed to making sure that communities in my region uh, are able to benefit from this, and also to maintain some of the wealth that's generated. Um, we've got a su sudden increase in uh, millionaires uh, in, in Southeast Ohio, and so uh, we want to make sure we properly manage that wealth uh, and that uh, that money stays in our community and works uh, for the people in the communities, uh, for our workers and for our young people so they can begin to stay uh, and have a future in Southeast Ohio. So thank you, it's good to be here, and I look forward to uh, having an exchange, a productive exchange this morning. Well, I'm Senator Tom Meehouse. Uh, I'm honored to be president of the Senate, and I represent an area down along the Ohio River, just east of Cincinnati. Uh, one of my great disappointments when I saw the map for the shale oil play is that my property was not part of it. <laughs> But I have had the opportunity, both in the House and the Senate, to work on uh, oil and gas related issues in my almost 12 years in the legislature, uh, starting in the House when I was on the Environment and Natural Resources Committee and on the uh, Public Utilities Committee, then in the Senate when I chaired the Environment and Natural Resources Committee, and now working closely with the administration uh, and the industry in trying to work through the issues in the energy uh, MBR that we are considering. And, and it is really an exciting time in Ohio when, when you think of how the energy landscape has changed in just a few short years. I mean, from the fact where we were, we were building LNG terminals to import natural gas, we're now retrofitting and converting them to export natural gas. Uh, the exciting potential that exists for the industries that need uh, this, this energy resource, uh, whether it's chemicals or manufacturing, and, and and the potential that exists for the renaissance of manufacturing, not just in eastern Ohio and in Lou's area, but throughout Ohio. When you, when you look at the ripple effect in all of the companies that are benefiting from, whether it's production of pipe or pumps, <coughs> equipment, uh, that exists throughout the state of Ohio. So while the focus is on eastern Ohio and certainly the most dramatic uh, changes are occurring in eastern Ohio, all of us in Ohio are benefiting from the, uh, the potential resurgence of manufacturing and, and the uh, resources that exist in the eastern part of the state. I firmly believe, having spent as much time as I did on the natural resources side and on the energy side, that we can responsibly develop uh, oil and gas resources in Ohio uh, and protect the environment. They are not mutually exclusive opportunities. Uh, and I know my colleagues uh, on the Republican side of the aisle are just as committed uh, to doing this in a balanced way. Uh, Lou has been a good partner as we work through this, this uh, process because jobs are not a, a partisan issue. We want people to work. Uh, and when people are working, they feel better about themselves, the economy does better, we all benefit from that. So we want to be partners with you in making sure that we do responsibly develop these, these resources. One of the areas where you could be very helpful uh, in the 
governor has mentioned this with other industries. You need to forecast. We need to know the types of, of employees that you are looking for. So that, as Lou mentioned, you know, we're working with the schools to make sure the curriculums are in place so that you have graduates from Ohio. Uh, I support the governor's initiative that we want these employees to come from Ohio. We welcome people who want to make Ohio their home, but we would frankly prefer to have in Ohio residents be the ones being trained to assume these new jobs that are going to be available over the coming decades. And, and these are generational jobs. These are jobs that that they will be able to work with and pass down with their families if we do this the right way. Uh, but you need to be a partner with us and, and help us understand the types of qualifications you're looking for. What are the skills that you need uh, to fill the openings that you're going to see in the coming years? So to the extent that you can do that, we can then work with the education community to make sure that, no pun intended, that the pipeline of qualified help is there when you're ready to develop those resources. So appreciate the opportunity to be here today and look forward to a Q&A afterwards. I'm State Representative Dave Hall. I am uh, Chairman of the Ohio Ag and Natural Resources Committee in the Ohio House. The gentleman to my right appointed me the uh, position and my job is to make sure uh, the speaker uh, looks good in that process of uh, <laughs> being chair. That's so, a tall order. There you go. That's <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> well, uh, and, and, and uh, having the opportunity, I have a uniqueness, uh, a unique process of, in the General Assembly, being the only member that uh, has six, I have 16 years of experience in the oil and gas industry, from the, uh, all the way down from the lowest job all the way through the process. So as chairman of, of the committee, uh, no one's going to fool me, for, uh, and, 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 the, and they're going to, the questions are going to be asked if uh, someone's out there uh, with misinformation, or uh, I can ask good questions. Uh, I, have an, I have a great committee who is very involved, and uh, we've gone all the way to 2.30 in the morning on some of these issues. But in the same process of having 16 years of oil and gas experience, I also was a parks and recreation director after my career in the oil and gas industry. So I have that process of the environmental side, understanding what we need to do to protect our greatest resource. And, and the process we've done in Ohio, we do protect that resource, water. But you know, having both those, that process, but also the other hat, and I'm not that old, but I have carried a few hats in my life, wearing a few hats. And the other hat was uh, being a president of a local development district in Eastern Ohio in Appalachia. So we were able to have that process of networking in basically in the crosshairs of the early pro process of the industry. I've had the opportunity, this is, I've, I've spoke to 153 town hall meetings in the last 12 months amongst uh, out in Ohio, talking to Ohioans, talking to different businesses, to uh, trade unions, to organizations throughout throughout Ohio. And, and it, being from Eastern Ohio, I, I finally see that uh, sparkle back in the eyes of people in Eastern Ohio, and you know, the hope and, and the opportunities. And Senator Gentile said it right, we've got to make sure these people uh, stay in Ohio. I, I consider this called the Beverly Hillbilly Dead Plampet process. You know, the problem with, with what we had was that uh, Jed Clampett uh, was able to get those oil re re revenues and he took off California. Our job is to make sure that we keep them in there. So they're, they're, the, they're the individuals who are going to uh, spur the next wave of the industry. They can reinvest and be entrepreneurs in Eastern Ohio in the shelf place. So that's something we have to be, our challenges is to get them to stay in Ohio and reinvest in Ohio. You're starting to see that in the early process in Eastern Ohio. But in, in the process, I, I look at this, we have, we have uh, challenges. There, you know, we look at this and have, from knowing the industry as well as I do, you have challenges. There's two things that can stop this. Number one, wells do not come up to production in the well process, the drilling process, and we have light production. The second one's government. And, and, and you, you, have, you have something where government can get, in, get in, the way, in the way of a process. We're in competition with other states, with other shale plays in the United States. There's only so many rigs in North America that are drilling. And our, our process is to make sure that we have the opportunity to get these rigs into Ohio, 
And, you know, we, we have a disadvantage of our infrastructure on the pipeline and some of the compressors, but I know we have companies coming in to, to take care of that. So in, in the competition mode, we have to make sure that uh, we're out there, you know, making sure government's not in the way, but still requiring them to do it our way. And that's uh, and the governor's MDR that's sitting in, in the uh, Senate, looking forward to having that in my lap here and there in, in the future so I, I can go through the process in committee. But there are a lot of challenges. But having all those hats, it can be done. We've been doing it. It's just a matter of now uh, uh, getting these people into, into Ohio and start the production process. So looking forward to some of these numbers that we're going to see in the near future within the Utica shale play. You know, everyone, you've got to remember, we separate the Marcellus and Utica. Everyone's looking at the Utica in this process, and we really, truly need some good numbers where we're at. Some of these wells, there's some test wells being done farther western part of the, uh, going to uh, Richland, Ashton County area, some of the center of the state of Ohio. Yeah, I just want to see where, where, those numbers, where those wells, how they come in, and see where we're at in this major play. Because remember, history, and I'm a history buff, Mr. Rockefeller started it all in Ohio a long time ago in the process. We're no strangers to the industry. It's just a matter of now. We need to make sure that uh, we get them here and get the process moving. So thank you for your time. It's good to be with you today. And uh, obviously, we're looking for assistance in the area of expertise uh, as to what uh, Ohio should be doing. We have a lot of options. Uh, some of them are, I'm sure, very good. Some of them we better watch out for. And uh, therefore, Ohio is, is, is really focused on what you can do to help us to do the job that we want to do for the people of this state. And you're right, uh, well, I was not uh, here when Rockefeller. Uh, <laughs> some, sometimes people get confused. I started in 1968, and uh, it, it's uh, <clears throat> some of them think that I've been here a long time, and I, I don't regard it that way. But uh, Rockefeller started over the western side of the state, and uh, of course, uh, the rest is history. Uh, obviously, he had had his training in Cleveland to be a bookkeeper, and that seemed to be the way to uh, run an oil business back then. Yeah, a remarkable man, obviously, and uh, the work that he did over in that area still has fruit after all these years. Marathon Oil headquarters are in one of the counties where he was drilling. I think it's important for us to learn from you so that we don't make mistakes. Unfortunately, uh, businesses uh, like this one uh, can be killed off by government in a hurry. I'm not quite sure what they're doing down in Washington right now. Uh, uh, Congressman John just came in, maybe he'll help me out. But uh, we, uh, this morning, had an ADP result of 119,000 new jobs. That's way below what it ought to be. And uh, if we don't, I am just scared to death of what's going to happen at the end of this year when they push tax cuts are on the block. That's a source of capital. That's a source of people feeling good about investing in America when they're overseas. Uh, there are a lot of people in Spain who don't want to keep investing there, for example, or Greece. And, and so we want to make sure that we have predictability long term so that we have the kind of economic superstructure that we're going to need here to do the right thing. I think the members who have mentioned our situation with regard to the infrastructure are right on the money. We've had a tough time in the eastern part of the state at uh, building the kinds of things that they need to get product out of there. And so this gives us an opportunity to do that, but in partnership. If you're our partners, then we know what is required for you, and we know as well what is required for those local areas. The unemployment there over the years has been very high. Uh, it was an area that at one time had a, a great deal going on and uh, unfortunately for some reason a lot of people in Washington don't think coal is a good uh, generator of power and so forth and uh, obviously that particular industry has had a hard time over there. But we're looking forward to the debate that's going to occur. I think this year ought to give us a pretty good chance of communicating to the people of the state of Ohio what could happen if we get it right. And it's important you, you gave us some amazing statistics there in terms of people's confidence. But the other thing that I think is extremely important for us to keep in mind is how much manufacturing ability this state has. And 
I see a friend of mine over here, Tim Timken, uh, the Timken Roller Bearing Company, which uh, makes the best steel in the world. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to what he may be able to do to be supportive and helpful. We just have a lot of outstanding uh, talent and capacity in this state to do things that are crucial in going forward with this. The, uh, the governor of Frank is, what, about a month ago? Uh, he sent us a 2,700-page bill, which was, uh, uh, it wasn't funny. And uh, <laughs> I, I want my people back on the hostage. And uh, uh, we're working hard at it. We're doing our best, uh, obviously. Uh, that is tying people up, literally. I mean, we just, we have, uh, uh, the mayor of Cleveland came up with a brand new proposal for how to improve urban schools. Uh, he's a very uh, devoted man on that program. It's a tough, it's, all this stuff's in front of us at once. And uh, for those of us who uh, remember uh, Confucius, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really tough to live in interesting times. So we hope that we can rise to the occasion and we know that you can help us to do that.